So, your face looks like a mess. Are you serious? And it always leads to you, well, dying. Or not being organized, stuff burns, oh, it's all bad. Well, I see, I see. Luckily for you, I have a solution, which I've been cooking up for the last few weeks. In this video, I will show you my new mini base design. I will also show you how you can extend it safely to avoid wildfires. We'll also talk about where you should base, like base location. And finally, if you wanted to build a mega base, I'm gonna show you a few of my mega bases uh, so you can uh, understand what yours might look like. Also, we did a 90 day run on my Twitch stream with viewers where we tried to build the mini base that I'm about to show you as fast as possible. So I might make a video out of that, I don't know, let me know. Let's start off with base location. In general, I like to be close to a few things. I like to have access to one of the deserts. That might mean basing close to the desert, or basing close to a wormhole that goes to the desert. And that's because cactus is really good sanity food in the early and mid game, and as a vegetable filler in the crock pot. I also want to be near a sinkhole, so I have easy access to the caves. And I don't want to be anywhere near a meteor field. <laughs> An example of a meteor field is in the mosaic biome. There's also another biome which can have a meteor field and it looks like this, so keep an eye out for that. So generally, if you see two or three wormholes that go to useful places like the swamp or a desert, then base near those and also base near a sinkhole. Otherwise, I like to just be in the middle of the map so that I can get to every biome relatively quickly. But now, for the grand reveal, to reveal the amazing base that I've come up with. Drum roll, please! Yes, 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 yes! yes. Yes. There it is. Uh, so if you want to copy it, go for it. There will be a picture that you can zoom in on in the description if you want to check it out that way as well. But now we're going to talk about each section inside this mini base and the specific placements of everything in the base because it can be a bit finicky to place everything. Well, sub gamers, welcome to my crib. <laughs> just okay. I'm just kidding. Let me <laughs> let me turn off first person. Alrighty. Now that we can actually see stuff, let's walk you around the base and talk you through uh, why things are placed the way they are. So let's start just a. Uh, Let's start at the top and work our way to the bottom, yeah? So at the top we have crafting stations. Same thing here, a shadow manipulator for magic, a celestial orb for celestial uh, crafting. Next we have grass and twigs. Uh, this is pretty basic because you basically always need grass and twigs, more so grass for bundling wraps, but you want very easy to access to this. But in the late game, you can make a lure plant farm, which we will show later. And then in this spot, we have a cistern. Uh, this spot is reserved for character specific buildings. So like a, cist a cistern for Wendy or a mighty gym for Wolfgang, stuff like that. So it's just character specific things. That's what that space is for. And here's a pot as well, just to store your figure sketches. And now the chest zone. This is a very small chest zone, but it does have 16 chests. So you'll probably be able to store everything you need in here. You would store materials and boss drops here. Also, I forgot to say at the beginning, ignore the day count. This is a creative world uh, where I had free crafting on to build everything that I built. The Ice Flinger Mag, if we show its range, you can see that it does cover basically the entire base. And don't worry, I will show how it covers the entire base in a second when we do our fire. fire. Alright, anyway, moving on to the crock pots. A salt box is optional, but very nice for storing meat without having to bundle it up, because stuff lasts four times longer in a salt box. This fridge with lots of rot in it, uh, can, you can have this fridge open while you have all of these crock pots open, so you can load stuff directly from the fridge into the crock pot. And then these two fridges are just like backup fridges if you have too much stuff. Now remember to build the crock pots first, then build these fridges inside. Then these three chests, this is just for like hunger food, this is healing food, and this is sanity food. So if you had some meaty stew, wanted to bundle, you'd bundle it up and then put it in the chest like that. Now, onto the farming. Oh my goodness, there's a weed in my farming plot. Get out of here. So we have a scarecrow just to look nice, but it also makes it so canaries can spawn. So if you wanted a canary, you can get one now. And uh, bird cages are not flammable. So uh, yeah, you can't set this on fire. So even though it's outside of the range of the flingomatic, it's still safe. And then we have a two by two farming plot. Uh, this is very basic. This is all you would need if you have two or three people. If you have more people, you might want a bigger farm farming plot, but this is very good for now. These three fridges are for storing seeds because you will get a lot of seeds while you're farming. And then at the bottom, we have a tools chest and this is inside the flingomatic range. And now this is a very new addition. This is the weather section. And hey, look, I just turned nighttime. So this is the winter section with a scaled furnace, thermal stones and beeflow hats and tamo shanters. Then the summer section with a fridge with cold thermal stones in them and summer equipment like desert goggles. And then here's the spring equipment, which is basically an umbrella or a raincoat. And then we have just generic stuff. So you have like light sources and walking canes in this chest, head armor in this chest, body armor in this chest, 
and weapons in this chest. If you look at my sanity drain, you can see that you can be inside this chest and you're not actually in darkness yet. But if I go a little bit further, you can see my sanity starts dropping. So these mush lights are placed perfectly so you can interact with everything in the base without getting darkness sanity drain. And that is a basic overview of the base. This will be in the description as well, but here's a uh, here's a look at the base with the tiles being shown so you can see where to build stuff. The only other thing to say about this section is the order in which you put things down. So for example, the one of the last things you should put down is the mush lights and the chests because the chests have a very small hitbox. So for example, if I tried to put this chest down and then put, put the scaled furnace down afterwards, the scaled furnace wouldn't fit. So you have to put the scaled furnace down first, then the chest afterwards. Same thing with the mush lights. You have to put the mush lights down last. There's also a flower in the middle of the base. This is more so if you're playing Wendy because you can leave Abigail on angry the entire time and whenever butterflies spawn, uh, Abigail will just kill the butterflies as soon as they spawn. So that's why there's a flower here. And I forgot to show Glomer is up here because he's cute and Chester is down here because he's ugly. And now for a fire test. So let's set it on fire and see what happens. And you'll see the fire will spread to the other chests which will make the Flingmatic throw snowballs uh, and then that puts everything out. Here we go light the scarecrow on fire. Turns out that scarecrow wasn't fireproof for <laughs> one second. All right, that, now, there we go. The scarecrow is fireproof. Let's set this crock pot on fire. And that gets put out. And there's a lightning rod at the top here to stop any lightning from hitting the base. Um, yeah, so there you go, the base is fireproof. And now going up here, this is where the sinkhole is and we have two bunny men and it's about to become evening time. So we're about to get a live demonstration of what happens. So the idea here is when the bats spawn, bunny men will also spawn and they'll start attacking each other. So the bats scream there because they can see the bunnies and they'll go to fight them. And I've also fenced in the bunnies because otherwise the bunnies could wander into your base and, and attack you, which would be really annoying. As for play the bunny hutches are centered on one tile each and the fences leave one space between the bunny hutch and the fence so that the bunnies have enough room to move around. This is what we call the optional extension. So if you wanted to add to the base, this is what I came up with and it works pretty well. And so here's the geometric squares if you want to build this yourself. But as you can see here, we have a berry bush farm, a pig farm, and a bunch of drying racks. And of course, there's an ice flinger mat in the middle, two pow cakes. This is to bait the pigs and the goblins. And here is this little extension at night time. We have four mush lights placed a little differently than the other base, but it lights up the entire place. The only detail about this layout is the pig houses and the berry bushes have to be on opposite corners because if the gobblers see the pig men, meaning they're close to the berry bushes, they'll just be constantly scared and will never go for any of the food. Gobbler spawns, which hopefully they will because uh, uh, there we go. As you can see, the gobblers act very erratically um, and sometimes they see the pal cake, sometimes they don't. So what I would recommend, after you pick your first berry bush, if you drop a berry about here, so as soon as the gobbler's done being scared at you, he'll then maybe see the berries, and as you can see, now he's ignoring me, so you can kill him. But sometimes it takes a while for them to actually see the pal cake. Then we have the rock fruit farm here, just a chest to store rock fruits and to store gunpowder and rot, uh, so this is pretty generic. And of course the pigs, so every full moon, you can kill these pigs that will turn into were pigs for easy meat and pig skin and then you can dry that meat on the drying racks not much more to say here you can put a bee farm here as well if you wanted but if you had a bee farm I would recommend putting it away from your base but that's not all I have one more thing to show you and that is down into the caves so as you can see hopping down to the caves you can see I've done some work beforehand you don't have to turf this area but up here you do need to turf as you can see we have a lure plant farm for both saplings and grass tufts now i'll show the geometric squares again so that you can see what you need to do if you want to recreate this and so the idea is you get your lure plant you plant it in the middle and then you wait until the eye bulbs uh, spawn and here's the geometric placement for the saplings as well even though it's exactly the same as the grass tufts plant the fleshy bulb and i'm gonna just do a quick magic command to uh skip forward Forward. And as you can see, the eye bulbs grow in a pattern which allows them to grow all around the grass tufts and the saplings. So the idea is you come down into the caves and that loads in this area. And so what you just saw is what would happen. The eye, eye bulbs would then start eating all the saplings and grass tufts. And then you just kill one lower plant. And let's check how many twigs we got. We got almost two stacks of twigs and some grass. Then you can plant it and then come back in three or four days. How much grass did we get? Oh, again, nearly two stacks. In the end game, this 
this is a super good farm. You could add another layer of grass tufts and saplings, but that requires loads more saplings and tufts, and sometimes not all of the saplings and tufts actually get eaten by the low plants. And also farming grass this way makes it so grass geckos don't spawn as long as you're not the one picking the grass, the low plant is. You can make these farms on the surface, but I wouldn't recommend it because during summer, you basically can't use them unless you build a flingomatic because they will wither and they could potentially burn. Also with the caves, this area is never loaded unless you're actually here. So once you come down here, all the eye plants will start eating. I'll also mention that a base setup like this could work. Let me zoom out real quick. As you can see, it is way bigger and it's still only using one ice flingomatic. The ice flingomatic is right in the middle and there are four lure plants planted around the ice flingomatic just at the edge of its range. If the ice flingomatic is on and we light a lure plant on fire, the flingomatic will put it out. Now, this isn't foolproof against red hounds, but during summer, where there's wildfires, it is pretty foolproof. So I just fast forwarded to summer, and now we will wait for a wildfire. Also, ignore the gaping path that's going through this base setup, it just got in the way, I'm sorry. And as you can see, the lure plant has caught the wildfire. Now, what does this mean? Uh, what it means is during summer, wildfires always target lure plants first. So if you're close to a lure plant, as in if you're down in this corner, a wildfire will target this lure plant. Same for this corner. If you're stood all the way in this corner, the wildfire will hit this lure plant here. So effectively using four lure plants extends uh, the range at which your flingomatic can cover. Now you can use this base setup if you want. Now for me, it's way too big, so I can't see everything at once using default view. To be fair, this base setup does look pretty cool at nighttime. By using eight mush lights, it is almost completely lit up. Welcome to my mostly wander mega base. I don't want this section to be too long so let's breeze through this. So first we have the teleport hub which is around the oasis. So this entire biome where you see all these buildings this is all the oasis. In all four of these scaled chests we have teleports to various places including the base, the caves and stuff all over the map like Luna Island but that's all wander specific. Then here we have light sources, weapons, armor, and uh, like walking canes and sewing kits. Then over here we have summer and spring equipment with Glomma. Then over here we have winter equipment. Now there are four scaled furnaces here because that makes the thermal stones really really hot. Um, like 70 or 80 degrees, so it keeps you warmer for longer in winter. Moving on to the next section, we have just all the crafting stations, not much to say. And here is where I store all of my turf, as you can see, there's one tile of turf and then just some turf on top of it. And I have these scaled furnaces sprinkled throughout the base, so if you start getting cold, you can just use that to get warm again. Oh no, a hound attack. What the heck is that? Goodness me, it's a varglet. Heck and run boys. So um, in this world, you used to be able to teleport to the caves to cancel hound waves, but that no longer happens. So instead, I'm gonna use the tall bird fort to defend me. Um, and you know, that works pretty well. Oh, there it is, the varglet's still going. Oh, there goes the varglet, tragic. So yeah, now I use the tall bird fort as hound defense, cool. Anyway, on with the base tour. Here's the storage section, magic in the middle, and then other stuff on this section here. Here we have mob drops, here we have plants and resources, and then there's like tools at the top. And then here's a look at the kitchen. We've got Wally's crock pots here, Wally's spice station here, a bird cage with a bundled up bird, and then three crock pot stations, each with a fridge. And then here we have a storage area for food. So here we have raw meat, uh, spices, uh, raw ingredients, and then up here is spice speciality food, and then this is just crock pot foods. And then this entire section here, is the farm zone. So these trees are stolen from the waterlogged biome over here. Um, and they they just look pretty cool. They don't really serve much purpose. They just look cool. Uh, around this area, we have a bunch of these giant crops. Again, they don't do anything. They just mark these chests uh, to see what's in them. So I have every giant vegetable. And because I ran out of room, I built a little boat to have all of my farming tools in. I think that looks pretty neat. With some kelp to keep making super growth formula. And of course, the farm zone. So we have two salt boxes to store vegetables, two fridges to store seeds, a scaled furnace to keep warm, and just, just four farm plots to do any farming. Also, the salt box and ice boxes aren't flammable, so you can dump a star cooler staff in the middle of them to keep your crops growing throughout uh, the nighttime. And all the berry bushes and trees here are just for decoration. They don't actually serve any pr purpose. Same with the flowers, and same with the light bugs. Moving on, we now have the bee zone, which again is... Uh, honey is pretty good. So every winter, you just go around these bee boxes and collect the honey because the bees won't come out to attack you. Pretty neat. 
neat. Heading past the food storage area, we have our mushy pigs. So this is where we uh, farm mushrooms. You can plant mushroom spores in mushroom planters to get more uh, more mushrooms. Inside these bundling wraps, we have some fun caps that we put on the pigs and that makes spores spawn and that's how we get them. And then here is what everyone wants to see. These are the pig and bunny man fire farms. And as you can see, the pigs are transforming and it does indeed work against were pigs also. But for now, I'll show you how the bunny man farm works. Now I'm not explaining this because uh, it would take way too long and I might make an entire video about it uh, separately. But I'll show you it in action real quick. So you put on a spider hat, that makes the bunnies angry and they come to try kill you, but they get stuck. And once they stop being angry at you, you put the spider hat away. Then you just head into their enclosure. You close the gates behind them so they can't escape the fire. And uh, you just uh, light the scarecrow on fire and then count to six. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, they're all starting to die. And then you turn the fling a mag and then you win. Oh, we got one lone survivor. That's unacceptable. So I'll make a video on this fire farm uh, at some point because it's got a very complex design that I came up with. But yeah, there's that. I'm not going to pick all this up. That can stay on the floor. And the pig fire farm works exactly the same. And then here we have some goat enclosures. So here's one enclosure decorated to look like a desert for the goats. We have another one here, another one down here, and then we have an automatic vault goat farm over here. If you want to know how to make one of these, go check Lacknish Monsters channel. He will explain how to make an automatic vault goat farm. And then in the middle here, there's a big square. I didn't finish decorating it until I lost interest in this world, but this is where antlion spawns. You can tell by all of the debris. Now only a couple more things to show. And that is where I store my boss drops. We tried to make a decorational zone for each of the bosses and what they drop. So here's Barrager's zone. It's a forest with some berry bushes looks cool here's deer clops i thought this was kind of funny this kind of looks like a noob's base and deer clops is about to break down his fence and come and destroy his base i thought it was kind of funny so there's deer clops then going up here we have moose goose so we've got multiple moose goose berry bushes and carrots because they're uh, moose goose in spring then we have antlion decorated with summer stuff and some of his glass statues and then here we have ancient fuel with ancient guardian as you can see Ancient Guardian is stuck on two walls. Haha, this is meant to represent how you used to be able to cheese him, so I think that was funny. Then we have the shadow pieces and Agent Fuel Weaver with all of his drops. Here we have claws. This is where I just throw all of my spare antlers and my spare Krampus sacks. As you can see, we have two extra ones. Nice. This is Dragonfly set piece. Uh, you know, some burnt stuff and also some walls. And here's Bee Queen. Not a lot to say. I should have decorated this with pan flutes. Here's the Twins of Terror and the Eye of Terror. I think this looks pretty neat. Here's Toadstool. It's meant to just look really rotten with a poop because I uh, know Toadstool rot stuff. Misery and normal Toadstool. And here we have Celestial Champion with a Salad Mander. And so this is where I put all my spare crowns, although I don't have any spare crowns. And this is Crab King. Do you know how long it took me to get this sunken chest here? And then finally, Maldatross. And that is all the bosses. And that is the entire base. The only other thing to show you would be if we head down into the caves. You can see, because I'm Wanderer and I can teleport to the caves, I have a mini mini like teleport hub set up in the caves in the middle of the caves so yeah i can just teleport down here then i in here i have teleports that teleport me to the ruins and stuff so i could teleport to fuel weaver pretty neat i could teleport to the ruins pretty neat to a full science station i could even teleport to ancient guardian oh you can't quite see him golf trying it oh well here's the chest there, there's the ornate chest this is a base setup for like wanda basically it just is a bunch of teleports Anyway, back to the main base. Then one more thing to show is my lure plant farms. So if we teleport to the reed trap and put on some desert goggles so that we can see, the, the moonstorm event is currently active. But yeah, so here's uh, three layers of grass tufts with a lure plant. It's winter, so the lure plants currently are not grown. Here's the uh, lure plant farm, but for saplings. Again, just a bigger version of the one that I already showed you. And then just by the side of all of this, we have a reed trap with all of the tentacles got killed by Berger and a lure plant in the middle of it. And then my humble beginnings. Here's the mini base that I built for this world. So I used this mini base before we started building the mega base. Also, I say we, it's because I streamed the entirety of this world, um, but it was only me the entire time. Uh, this is a solo world. That's everything. 
I hope you can see what your mega base might look like. Now, if you're building a massive mega base like this, you basically you can basically only base in the oasis because of wildfires. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this informative video. The March quality of life update happened a couple of days ago, and I've already done a boss run with the new new wolf gang. And you know, I broke my record again. So expect a video on that in the next week or so. Um, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.